New Year, same old bullshit. Hello, Champagne Dreamers. Welcome back to my channel. I'm your girl, Miss J, the trash queen of glam, geek, and gore. And for this video, as usual, I am late. Don't be tardy for the party. I know that nobody remembers that song from Kim Zolciak, but I love it. <laughs> <laughs> So I know that we're already into January, but life gets crazy and this is where we are. So I hope you're excited to see my top 21 of 2021 beauty. So this is all of the top products that I reviewed on my website, JanessaJ.com. Now JanessaJ.com is in a little bit of a chrysalis stage waiting to become a glamorous butterfly. So we are getting ready to launch 3.0 version of the world of champagne at JanessaJ.com. So these these reviews are not available. Normally I would link them down below, but um, we are in a reinvention phase and maybe I'll have a video later where I talk about that. So you won't be able to see the reviews, but you can see of the things that I reviewed last year, these are my top 21 of 2021. And of course, because we have to also throw a little bit of shade in the new year, I have my top five worst products of 2021. So we're going to go ahead and get started. If you want to see what my top 21 of 2021 and my five worst products of the year, then stick around because we're getting into it right now. Let's start by burning some trash. Let's just get into the five worst products. Let's just talk about it, get all the negativity out, and then move on. So in the number five spot of worst products that I tried in 2021 was the Midas Cosmetics Bitchin' Cake Liners. <laughs> I talked about this in one of my review roundups and I really kind of put it in my bottom products for that month. I didn't love it. It was a set of cake liners. I've already decluttered it and it was a set of pink and green shades and I should have loved it, but they just were weird. They were hard to work with. I will admit that some of it absolutely could be user error because I'm not super familiar with cake liners, but they were not very beginner friendly. They were too watery. And then if I tried to dry them out, I couldn't get them to stick on the brush. The greens were really watery and sheer and hard. No matter how little liquid I tried to use, I just couldn't get them to work. So in the number five spot from Midas Cosmetics, the Bitchin' Cake Liners. Bitchin'. Bitchin'. In the number four spot of my worst products of the year, the face palettes from XX Revolution. So these are the ones that I ordered them from Ulta. And they were online only, so you couldn't even get them in the store. And there was one of the shades where every time I ordered it, it came broken. So I had it replaced like twice. And eventually I just asked for a refund. Part of it was how Ulta's shipping department packages things. They didn't package it very well. They had it, it was like in a box. And then it was just in a like sort of bubbly envelope, but the bubbles weren't very aggressive. And it was loose, so it banged around. Like it wasn't like they packed it up tight so that the bubble envelope at least had some sturdiness. It was just in there. It was in with other palettes and boxes, so it banged against them on the trip. It was just terrible, and they couldn't get their shit together. I couldn't go into the store to pick up a replacement because it was only available online. And that's the only place that I know to get XX Revolution in store. So I reviewed them. They were okay. That production issue aside, the highlighter blushes were also really, really, really shiny. So they were kind of these three color things. I'll try to put some pictures on the screen. Like the highlight and the blush colors had like veining. It's kind of like the hourglass, how they have that veining of the ambient light powder through their blushes. Except that the color was so metallic and aggressive that no matter what color the blush was, it just looked like a silver highlight. It just was too much. So they weren't very well done. And XX Revolution is supposed to be like their fancy brand through Makeup Revolution. Those were not fancy. Here's your one chance fancy and you let me down. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was going to be able to say it without laughing. <laughs> In the number three spot was the Chakra Palette from Peachy Queen Cosmetics. The Align Your Chakras. This one is okay. The Peachy Queen's quality kind of goes up and down. This one, the quality was not great. There were some weird choices for the colors. I'm not sure why. When they picked out the colors, 
Blue is actually darker than indigo, which is not how actual colors work, so I don't know why that was made. Shimmers were okay, but they were kind of that satiny sort of shimmer that's got a little bit of sparkle, kind of how like all shimmers used to be like 10 years ago, before people realized that you could do metallic eyeshadow and you can have like beautiful, like impactful shimmers. They were doing that old school, like just a little bit of sparkle. Like this is not the 80s, this is not your grandma's makeup. Like, give us some sparkle, give us some texture. It just wasn't doing it for me. So that one is in my number three spot. In the number two spot, I hate to do this because Menagerie Cosmetics, their eyeshadows are the bomb.com for real. I know that that expression dates me a little bit. Happy. And I love their eyeshadows, but their Arthurine blush palette was not great. I got like hard pan from a blush. That never happens to me. I don't know what the fuck happened with those palettes. They were just not good. It was so hard to work with. The colors were streaky and patchy. There was kind of this weird mustardy brown. It looked like it was supposed to maybe be like a peachy orange blush, but it came out kind of like mustardy colored. It was just not great. And I really want Menagerie to succeed. And I'm very excited to try their highlighters. Their highlighters look beautiful. And some of the other shades that weren't in the palette of their blushes look like they could be really good. But the matte blushes in that Arthurine palette just were not good. I'm sorry. Don't hate me. And the number one worst product of 2021, the product that really shit the bed, the Supreme Gloss from Jeffree Star Cosmetics. These were terrible. I kind of like that brands are starting to do these like opaque glosses where if you want like a glossy vinyl finish on your lips, but you want it opaque so it's like lipstick. I love that people are playing around with that and people are doing it. The ones from Jeffree Star were not great. They had this weird butter smell. Like they smelled like butter butter. Like it was this weird, not like a buttery popcorn or like a, a cake that's made with lots of butter. It just fucking smelled like butter. It was weird. And then it had this weird like tulip Georgia O'Keeffe vagina applicator that made no goddamn sense. You could not get a symmetrical application to your lips no matter what because it was this weird tulip shape which on one side it would be beautiful and you'd get it would just like glide along your lips and it was perfect except that that shade was asymmetrical. So when you tried to use it on this side it came out completely different and if you're trying to like turn it and do all the it was a mess. It was a goddamn mess. They weren't opaque enough. Like, they couldn't decide if they wanted to be, like, opaque glosses or if they wanted to be these kind of semi-sheer but still pigmented glosses. And they looked just kind of jizzy on your lips. They were not great. I did not love them. They were the worst product of 2021. Hashtag sorry, not sorry. They were the worst. All right, so now that that negativity is out of the way, let's get into the top 21 of 2021. And let's start with a palette. I'm not gonna show everything in the video, but when I talked about this palette in my review roundup for that month, I couldn't find the palette. I'll go ahead and link that video right up here in the cards if you'd like to take a look. But I talked about this palette. It's from an indigenous owned makeup brand and it is absolutely fabulous, and that is Prados Beauty. This artwork is beautiful. This artwork is absolutely gorgeous, and then you get to the palette inside. Hold, please. You get this really beautiful rainbow palette. Now, this one was overall really good. I really struggled with this red shade. Luckily, these two shades are not that different, so if you want a red, just go with the lighter one. This red and this blue were like, struggle bus city for me. I don't know what happened. I could not get them to work. This one has like weird discolored hard pan. It's not great. But every other shade in here is absolutely phenomenal. So even to have two kind of dud shades out of this whole like 30 pan palette or whatever it is, I absolutely love it. I think that this is phenomenal. They came out with another palette after this, which was, um, I forget what it was called, but it had like 
the cover was like blues and purples and it had um, women. It was the same artist and it was a similar sort of style, but it had women on the cover. Um, and it's beautiful. I haven't added that to my collection yet, but I loved this. So this was absolutely my number 21 of 2021. In the number 20 spot, I am a sucker for pastels. And so I had to give number 20 to the Pastel Pup Palette from Menagerie Cosmetics. That one is absolutely gorgeous. Those pastels are so pigmented, so beautiful. They are the type of impactful pastels that people of all different skin tones usually are able to work with. Because sometimes pastels, if they're too wishy-washy, if you've got darker skin, they just kind of fade away into this gray muddiness that's not great. These are pigmented, they're impactful, they're absolutely beautiful, and that adorable cover art is fantastic. I love it. And I love that it had one of their trifoil shades in it. I've actually depotted the matte white and the matte black, and I've put in two additional trifoil shades, and then I've rearranged it into kind of a little pastel rainbow. It's so cute. I love that their palettes are magnetic and you can rearrange them. I loved the Pastel Pup palette. Now, I think the Pastel Pup palette has been out for a little while. With Menagerie, sometimes it's hard to get a hold of things. They sell out, and I kind of... I'm usually not in too much of a hurry, so if I have to wait a little while, that's fine. So I should say that about this list, is that it's not necessarily that all of the things on this list came out in 2021, but they were all reviewed on my website in 2021. So the Pastel Pup has been around for a little while. I discovered it last year, and I love it. In the number 19 spot, we have kind of a foundation product, a complexion product, if you will. And that is the Puff Puff Pass Powder from Kim Chi Chic Beauty. I love this powder. I never get excited about a powder. I usually just go with my old school Cody Airspun powder that I've been using for 100 years, just like everybody's grandma. But I really have been getting into trying some additional powders. Now, I don't powder my whole face. I am an oily beast, and so I use, like, matte foundation. I use mattifying primers. But sometimes if I do, like, too much powder, it can get a little cakey. And if I start to get oily, it'll, like, clump up. It's not great. But I do love to bake under my eyes a lot, and so this is phenomenal. This is in the shade Translucent. I recently picked up, I'm very excited to try, I haven't even played with it yet as of this filming, and that is the shade Ivander, where I have always wanted to try lavender powders and have them work, but all the lavender powders that I've tried have been too lavender, and it brings too much color. And so Kim Chi Chic did Ivander, which is a combination of ivory and lavender that's supposed to have some of the brightening of the lavender powder, but then it's mixed with an ivory to kind of tone down the color. So I'm excited. Hopefully we'll talk about it in a future video, but I love the Kimchi Chic Puff Puff Pass setting powder. In the number 18 spot, BH Cosmetics. I said in my predictions video, if you want to go ahead and check that out, you can see it right up here in the cards. But I said that BH Cosmetics was going to become the new NYX Cosmetics. And these brunch palettes that they did are phenomenal. So the Frosé Highlighter Palette is the one that I want to call out specifically. I loved all of the brunch palettes. All of the brunch face palettes, the three eyeshadow palettes, the Blueberry Muffin, the Avocado Toast, and whatever the fuck the last one was. I can't remember. I don't know. They're <laughs> the Mimosa, I feel like. But I thought it was another food one. I don't know. I'm getting confused. It doesn't matter. I was so excited for the Frosé because it was these beautiful, beautiful pink and silver highlighters. And I feel like sometimes it seems like they should be easier to find, but I have a hard time finding just like straight up pink highlighters. I feel like a lot of times with pink highlighters, it's like an icy pink. And when you put it on and it shears out, it becomes much more like silver or white than pink. Um, it's much more, or they'll do that like orgasm, NARS orgasm, where they'll mix pink with kind of like a gold. And again, you just get the gold or it becomes sort of peach when you combine the two things together. I love like a pink highlighter, like Ofra's Pillow Talk before they were canceled. I love a pink highlighter. And so the Frosé palette gives you some beautiful pinks and there's like just a beautiful kind of taupey color 
It's so wonderful. So I absolutely love that palette. I'm excited to see what BH Cosmetics does in 2022 because they have had some real bangers for the last year and a half, and I hope they keep it up. I am wishing for their success because the Frosé palette was phenomenal. I have still been on my blush journey. I love blush. I love playing with blush, experimenting with blush. With this look, I did sort of a draped blush kind of look, bringing it up around the eyes and trying to do this 80s graffiti sort of look. I love playing with blush. And one of the companies that has been absolutely supporting me as I've been on this blush journey is Trixie Cosmetics. Now I love all of their blush palettes. I think they're all phenomenal. They all have like a deeper blush, a lighter blush, and then like a highlighter. But the one that I think was the best from this last year was the Mod About You. So Mod About You was their orange palette. And I'm saying orange in sort of air quotes because if you're looking for orange blush, the Jaclyn Hill Rouge Romance, the warm toned one, has like an orange, like Valencia, Anita Bryant kind of orange blush. The ones from Trixie Cosmetics are not really orange, but I think they're better because of it. So the darker orange is like a hot coral. So it's like orange, but like edging over into that deep reddish orange, blood orange, electric coral kind of color. And then the lighter color is this beautiful peach. It's so pretty. I love a peach blush. I love pink blush and I usually do pink blush, but I've had so much fun playing with peach blush lately that Oh, the Mod About You is absolutely phenomenal. And then the highlighter is beautiful. It's a wonderful kind of golden compliment to both of the two kind of orange, orangey, peachy, corally kind of shades in the palette. So Mod About You, absolutely phenomenal. It's number 17 on my top 21 of 2021. Number 16, proving that even a salty bitch like me is able to get over their grudges. This is a product that came out in 2020, but it took seven months to arrive. So I didn't get to review it until 2021. And that is the It's Freakin' Bats palette from Butte Bean and Shroud Cosmetics. Now, this was a mess and I don't know what happened Obviously, they did not anticipate what kind of following Butte Bean was going to bring to this collab, how impressive this color story was going to be. But this one, I was not even at the last set of orders. They were still shipping out orders after I got mine. It took seven months to arrive. But I mean, look at her. Look at her. This is beautiful. And this is so different. That's why I love that smaller creators and smaller brands are collabing together. Because how many times did I have to see the same beigey bronze bullshit from fucking Chrissy Teigen and Becca? They released the same collection like eight times. Stop it. I love that smaller brands are more willing to take a risk and small creators are bringing a different sort of perspective. And so you get beautiful green periwinkle, this purple with this gold duochrome, this acid green. Like this is a beautiful palette. It's so unexpected. You would never see a Too Faced or a Benefit or even like Fenty Beauty put out this sort of color story. It's amazing. It's beautiful. The quality, once it arrived, was lovely. So I had to give it its props and I had to put it at number 16 on my countdown. In the number 15 spot, I've got some highlighters. So I love highlighters. I obviously go absolutely ham. I love to glow for the gods, as they used to say. And a lot of people have given up the crazy highlighter. Never, never me. And I absolutely loved the highlighters from the Monster Collections by The Collective Cosmetics. Now, I have been subscribed to The Collective Cosmetics subscription box for over a year. I have a video that's going to be coming up very soon, so subscribe to my channel now so you don't miss it. But I'm going to be comparing Deck of Scarlet's subscription service with the Collective Cosmetics subscription service. And I love all the products that I've gotten from the subscription service, but they also have a monster series. So it's usually like four or five eyeshadows, a highlighter, and some sort of lip product. Now they had four of them. They had like a Frankenstein monster, 
a werewolf, a vampire, and a devil. And then they added one that was a ghoul. And the ghoul is this, like, hot pink mixed with, like, pinky lavender with some, like, green duochrome. It's so gorgeous. I will make sure I put a picture on the screen so you can take a look at what I'm talking about. But I reviewed all of the highlighters from the Monster Collections. I bought all four of the highlighters. I bought the eyeshadows from two of the collections. But I absolutely loved them. The eyeshadows were great, but the highlighters really stole the show. I think that the collective has some really interesting formulations, some different textures, some that have glitter, some that are just shimmer, some that are almost like metallic. They're beautiful. So the monster highlighters absolutely belong at number 15. In the number 14 spot, we have another blush entry. And this time, she's a bougie bitch. It's the Pat McGrath blushes. I love them. Now, I had said in my original review, are they absolute must-haves? No. They are not really that much different than any other blushes out on the market. It's not like you're going to get performance that you can't get other places. But if you don't mind the price point, and really in Pat McGrath's line, they're closer to that mid-range point than like her eyeshadows or something else from her brand. But her blushes are just a pleasure to use. They are this silky soft formula. The shimmery ones just have this beautiful kissed from within sort of shimmer. They're absolutely beautiful. So if you can afford them, if they fit in with your budget, they are such a wonderful, joyful product to use. Are they must-haves? No, but they were good enough to make it into my top 21 for the year because they really are just beautiful. In the number 13 spot, is this just a Trixie Mattel stan channel? I have been trying so many products from Trixie Cosmetics over this last year, and I have been in love, and I talked about the mod about you earlier, but Trixie also, in this last year, decided to dip her toes into eyeshadow. And in the number 13 spot, we have the Plant Gay palette. This is so fun. I love this theme. Can I tell you, during this pandemic and during quarantine, the plant gaze on Instagram are out of control. Sister, get it together. They are just like living in the fucking jungle book. Like they're just posting all of it. And yes, it's beautiful, but I'm maybe a little bitter because I kill every plant that I ever bring into my house. So I just am sick of it. I'm sick of looking at other people who can grow plants. It's not fair. But I love the Plant Gay palette from Trixie Cosmetics. What I love about this is, predictably, I love that there's this whole row of greens here, but I love that she also gave us these sort of contrast shades. And I have said before, I love pink and green together. It feels very retro, very 60s, which is very Trixie Mattel. And so I love that there's these pinks, there's this kind of orchidy purple, there's a beautiful yellow. This usually needs a little bit of help, like a white base or a little something to really kind of help it pop, but it's a beautiful shade. And then these kind of interesting browns. I think they are phenomenal. I love this palette. I absolutely think this is gorgeous. I am so excited to keep playing with this and keep creating fun looks, but I absolutely love the Planky palette from Trixie Cosmetics. In the number 12 spot, glitter! I love glitter and I love Lit Cosmetics. This is not about Lit Cosmetics, but I always have to shout out Lit Cosmetics because I love them. But I have been living for the Lemonhead LA Space Paste and Space Jam glitter highlighters. So this last year, they had a collection that they put out that included glitter highlighters where there isn't much of a base color to the gel, but they're these beautiful sort of iridescent-y kind of highlighters where if you look at the glitter pieces straight on, they don't really have any color, but then they have these beautiful flashes of like a rich, beautiful deep blue or a turquoise or a green or a gold. And they actually did sort of a multi-chrome glitter highlight, which I thought was really fun, that went from like magenta to a peachy orange to like a gold. It's absolutely gorgeous. I love them. I think they're so easy to apply. They're so easy to work with. They're supposed to be super easy to remove. Glitter is the herpes of the drag world and we just have to live with it. Once it's there, it's there forever. It moved in. It's paying the bills. Just make sure she gets her rent in on time. 
So I love it. I love these highlighters. They are so fun. I love Lemon Head LA. I'm always going to be a lip girl, but I love the Space Paste and the Space Jam from Lemon Head LA as well. If you're looking for a solid application of glitter, they're great. In number 11, Trixie Cosmetics. I swear she's not paying me. This is not sponsored. And I don't know why I liked her products so much. I just have tried to resist and I can't. And they would be the Trixie Cosmetics Lipsticks. I love her stick lipsticks. I wish she would do more of them. She's really gotten into this like gloss place where she's putting out these very pigmented glosses and some glitter glosses, which are fine. The glitter glosses are fine. The opaque glosses are fine. They're never gonna make it into my top 21 of 2021. They're just not. But her lipsticks are phenomenal. She had this like bright orange lipstick called Model Actress that is amazing. I absolutely love it. I am dying. She has stopped talking about it, so I don't know if it's just never going to come back in stock. She has been talking about restocking Bobble for a long time. She worked it into a few of her videos way back like a year ago and was like, Bobble's coming back soon. Bobble's coming back soon. And then she's just stopped talking about it. And every time I do a video where I talk about Trixie's lipsticks, I always have to be like, where's Bobble? And I have to do it again because I love her lipsticks. They are so good. That's why they're number 11, because they really are just a wonderful lipstick formula. The Red Scare lipstick from Trixie is wonderful. Model Actress is gorgeous. I would love more shades. I would love for her to do a liquid lipstick. Kim Chi's doing it. I don't know why Trixie can't. But I would just love for her to stop doing quite so many glosses and bring back some lipsticks. In the number 10 spot, I felt bad that I trash-talked Menagerie Cosmetics in my worst five products with the Arthurine blush palette. So we're going to now give them a little bit of shine. In the number 10 spot, we have the Flight Club palette from Menagerie Cosmetics. This is beautiful. I love Menagerie Cosmetics formula, but this palette for me really was phenomenal. I loved the Serenity palette, and I think in my monthly review roundup where I talked about these two palettes, because I did a lot, a lot of Menagerie products that time, um, I think I actually had put Serenity above Flight Club, but when I'm thinking about overall for the whole year, Flight Club is just such a beautiful collection of purples. I love purple eyeshadow. Now, I felt like the Serenity palette was kind of a nice alternative for people who didn't want to pay the price point. The Natasha Denona Circo Loco palette, they had kind of a similar vibe. There was a similar combination of some of the colors. But the Flight Club is monochromatic. It's beautiful. There's a nice range from light to deep. Now, there are more light shades than I would like. I would like a few more kind of maybe into the more medium um, there's some beautiful deep shades and especially like shimmers and stuff, but I love it. I think it's phenomenal. If you like purple eyeshadow, the Flight Club, I think is a must have. If you don't like to do purple looks, I, I don't know what to tell you. I don't know how to help you with your life choices, but I think the Flight Club is absolutely amazing. Beautiful. In the number nine spot, we have a problematic pick. <gasps> The Jaclyn Cosmetics Bougie Rouge Blush Palettes. Everybody is out here in these YouTube streets waiting for Jaclyn Hill to fail, and I am not here for it. I know she had those hairy, gross lipsticks. I know she doesn't think before she talks on a lot of things, but when she does, like, blush products, they are amazing. Those little blush and bronzer duos were a wonderful silky formula. They were beautiful. And then she followed it up with these. And these are so gorgeous. They're so like silky and smooth. They apply beautifully. I've got two of them on my cheeks today. So this is Rouge Affair. This is the lighter, like cool toned, more pinky sort of blush. And so for my blush draping look today, I've got the shade Fantasy kind of all through here. And then I put the highlighter on top of it. And then the shade Forever, I did as kind of a little bit of like contouring on the cheek. So I didn't do my typical aggressive like brown contour. I did this beautiful like 
magenta pink right in through there and then the um this lighter pink shade these are so beautiful but for you warm tone bitches don't worry about it this the bougie rouge palette has these beautiful more warm toned red orange peachy kind of blushes these are absolutely stunning. These powders are a joy to work with. I absolutely love them. And obviously they ended up higher than the Pat McGrath blushes. So yeah, if you want to treat yourself, the Pat McGrath is a fun little splurge. These are much more affordable compared to that. And you get these beautiful shades. There's a cool tone and a warm tone option. Really beautiful. In the number eight spot, I had to go, I love highlight and I love Kaleidos highlighters, but I had to give it to their first multi-chrome highlighter, the Space Age Prophecy. They have now released a second one called Gifted. I haven't had a chance to pick that one up, but I love it. Now, there's no secret to this multi-chrome highlighter. It's not anything special or unique to the market. They were one of the first brands to put it out as a highlighter. It's basically just a multi-chrome shadow that's got a sheer whitish base. So it's not like the formulation is really wild and out there. They just said there's no reason why you couldn't wear something like this as a highlighter. And it's beautiful as a highlighter. And so it's got this kind of pink to orange to almost green sort of multi-chrome look and it's gorgeous it's stunning i think it's beautiful and if you have a large collection of multi-chrome shadows the ones that have less of a base in them now some of them have the black base those aren't as great for highlight but if you've got some that have that white or the sheer base use them as highlights they're so fun and the kaleidos absolutely beautiful it's absolutely worthy of number eight on my countdown in the number seven spot i decided to give it to some singles now i am still a little bit shy about playing with singles i have tried a few brands where i've bought some new singles but i haven't really found that many that i'm super in love with except give it up for the terra moon singles I picked up their, I think they're called Cosmic Chameleons, and a couple of their Extreme Multichromes, and they are gorgeous. They are so beautiful and impactful. They're not, like, stupid expensive. They're a little bit more expensive than other singles because they're Multichromes, but they're absolutely beautiful. Um, comparatively, they're less expensive than a lot of other options, and they're so beautiful. I absolutely love them. So I had to give it to the Terra Moon singles. I'm still testing the waters and trying to figure out how best to use singles. I'm not always super successful and I don't have a lot of experience with multichromes, but these make me want to play and want to experiment. And number six is more blush. I love the Lunar Beauty Moon Prism. Moon Prism? I love the Lunar Beauty Moon Prism Blush Palette. It is so beautiful. It is so gorgeous. I absolutely love it. It is just perfection. It's so good. The powders are so easy to use. There's a mix of like more kind of matte with some shimmer. I think it's mostly one or the other. I think it's mostly shimmer. I have to remind myself, but all of them are a joy. They are all wonderful to work with. I'll have some information up on the screen because clearly I'm trying to do this from memory and I'm not grabbing all of the products because that would take forever to film, but I absolutely love it. That one, you know what? Wait, hold on a second. I am going to grab that one because I love it. All right, here it is. So this is the Moon Prism Blush Palette. I absolutely love these. Now it is just the one that's like a true like shimmer blush. But even these other ones that are matte, I feel like have this kind of beautiful satin application that's not a true shimmer, but it's just beautiful. It's so beautiful. All these colors are so gorgeous. This is wonderful. Both of these shades for working into my contour. This like peachy color is so pretty. It's so wonderful. And this packaging is really Lunar Beauty at its best. So that weird fucking Teletubby baby in the sun nightmare that they put out for holiday that was like a contour palette. I don't know what happened there. Normally the packaging is stunning and this is perfect. Like this is exactly when Lunar Beauty gets it right, they get it so right. This is so pretty. This is wonderful where it's got some embossing. There's the pieces that are raised. It's got the moon theme. It's just beautiful. You see this packaging and it makes you excited to open it up. And when you open it up, the 
powders on the inside are just as good as the packaging. That's what I want to see from these companies. That's what I want is I want the packaging to inspire me. And then when you get to the product, it lives up to that promise. Why do you not fit in the drawer that I literally just took you out of? <laughs> now we are in the top five of 2021 beauty. I am so excited. These really were phenomenal products. I love all of these products. I play with these products as much as I can. I have a lot of makeup, but I try to come back to these products as much as possible. In the number five spot, this is a wonderful collab palette featuring Angelica Nickvist from Texas via Sweden. And that is the Kaleidos Club Nebula palette. I love this palette. This is so beautiful. This in combination with the Escape Pod palette for a colorful hooker clown like me is perfection. Now by itself, the reason why it's number five, it's not higher, is because I felt like I needed a few more of those like mid-tone bright shades that you get in the Escape Pod palette. So using those two palettes together is perfect. By itself though, I love her choice of those colorful dark mattes are phenomenal. And the light shimmers are absolutely stunning. The only thing again that knocks it down is that it just needs a little bit more oomph in that mid-range. But it's so beautiful. The eyeshadows are a pleasure to use. I know this is no longer available. I'm sorry if you missed it. If you can find it somewhere for a reasonable amount, I would say go for it. If you've got somebody who's decluttering it, I don't know why they would, but if they were, if they can, if you can snatch it up, do it. I love it. It's so much fun. It's so beautiful. And it's a beautiful collection of colors, like blues and greens and teals and with some reds and, oh, so gorgeous. Good job, Angie. Thanks. She goes, <laughs> no problem. <laughs> yeah, welcome. Not you. In the number four spot, another problematic pick. I had to give it to the Pink Religion palette from Jeffree Star Cosmetics. I really liked this. So I think that the Jeffree Star Cosmetics formula for a big drag queen industrial application like me, those shadows, it's really hard to find good alternatives for them. They are some of the staples in my show makeup. I absolutely love them. And I love pink. Obviously. So I loved the Pink Religion palette. My main complaint with it is that there were only three shimmer shades. I want more shimmer because I know that Jeffree Star Cosmetics can do phenomenal shimmers. There were only three and they were that like mega sparkle or whatever. They are beautiful, but I just would have wanted more shimmers. Now, there are other pink shimmers in some of his other palettes, so that's probably why there wasn't as many. Or it could have also been, we're in the middle of a pandorama, panda express, a pandemonium. And so it's cheaper to make matte shades than to have to bring in these pearls and shimmers and metallics and things. So it was probably a little bit of a cost cutting measure, but I still think it's worthy of the number four spot. I love the pink religion and I love the Bible packaging. I People who want to get upset about makeup packaging, I have no time for you. You can suck all the dicks. Sorry, not sorry. Just out here making friends. In the number three spot, another collab palette. I had to give it to my girl, Teresa is Dead. The Lethal is Dead palette. I love that palette. I absolutely love the Lethal formula. I think it's phenomenal. Now the shades in that palette are really beautiful and I've made some really gorgeous looks. They're a little bit more muted than I typically go for. I like a little bit more saturation, a little bit more brightness, which is why this palette is only at number three. But it's still at number three. It still was a phenomenal palette and it still beat out all of those other products earlier on the list. I think that light yellow shade, oh, is so gorgeous. There's like kind of a peachy, pink, corally shimmer shade that is so gorgeous. There's a deep green matte that's like, there's something about it, even though the shades are a little bit muted, it doesn't feel boring to me because those shades, they feel like an old VHS tape that you find in like a video store. Remember when we used to have video stores and there was that horror section? And like sometimes you would get a movie and rent it just because of the cover art. That's really what her palette reminds me of. It reminds me of looking at those things and seeing those weird 
covers and just the like kind of sun faded that's what it reminds me of i love it i love her aesthetic i am so happy for her i hope she does another collab i would love to see what else she has going on i am so excited so i had to give my number three spot to teresa is dead x lethal cosmetics lethal is dead in the number two spot no surprise, once again, it's green. Last year, the number two spot was Jeffree Star Cosmetics Blood Money Palette. This year, it's Glam Light, and it is the Dirty Martini Palette. I love Glam Light's formula. I think that they are phenomenal. I love what they're putting out. I haven't picked up the Icy Collection yet, but I'm so excited to pick those up. I love these new palettes that they're doing. They have a little bit more toned down packaging for all you fucking Debbie Downers who don't like the big puffy burger or the taco or all those other things. These are a little bit more sedate. It's slimmer packaging. It's just got the picture. It doesn't have any like floaty things or anything in it. It's scaled down packaging with beautiful, beautiful shades. I also picked up the wine palette, which is gorgeous. I love purples, but the Flight Club palette, if I had to pick between Flight Club and wine, I would go with Flight Club, but the Dirty Martini is so good. The greens in there are so beautiful. Now, I will say on those Happy Hour palettes, I feel like the mattes aren't the same sort of high quality that I usually see in Glam Light, but they're not bad by any means. They feel different. They feel a little bit drier than some of the other mattes from like the Cake Palette or the Ice Cream Dreams. But even though they feel a little different, they perform beautifully. They are so stunning. And I love green, so I had to give it to the Dirty Martini Palette number two. And now we are at the number one spot. I am so excited to share this with you. This is the end of the countdown. This is the end of the road. So we've come to the end of the road. Copyright strike and just general bad taste strike. But I am super excited to share with you my number one product for 2021. We have made it to the end of the list. And of course, I am a unicorn princess in disguise. I know I like to cover it up. I seem salty and bitter all the time, but I just love a little unicorn fantasy and I got everything I could have ever wanted from the Give Me Glow Pastel Dreams palette. Why am I not holding it up? I don't know. From the Give Me Glow Pastel Dreams palette. I love this palette. This is so beautiful. This is what I want in a pastel palette. The pastel pup was fine. It still made it onto the list, but that one was all pastel mattes. And so that is fun if you want to play around with matte textures and maybe you want to do just like a one shade look and add some glitter or something like that. But this palette, this palette, this palette, look at these beautiful duos. Look at these. You could do such an easy two shade look. You put the matte all through the crease, blow it out, put the shimmer on the lid, you're done. You've got six beautiful pastel duos. But then you can start mixing and matching. And I love that all of the shimmers have a little bit of a twist. They've either got like a silver shimmer or a gold shimmer or just like a really bright, this yellow is just like yellow. Like this is the yellow shimmer you've always wanted. It's so gorgeous. I love these together. And this is just perfection. It's perfectly balanced. You've got equal matte and shimmer because I know some people like mattes better. Some people like shimmers more. I always err on the side of more shimmer, but if we can get this beautiful sort of balanced palette, this is it. And the performance, if you have not tried any of the metallic shimmers from Give Me Glow, what are you even doing with your life? They are so good. And these are so beautiful. I love them. So this absolutely earns the number one spot in my top 21 of 2021 countdown. Oh, so good. So good. I love it. Mwah. Number one. All right, that is the video. That is my top 21 of 2021 beauty countdown. These are all products that I reviewed on JanessaJ.com in 2021. The website 3.0 will be relaunching very soon. Until the website is back up, leave me your comments down below and let me know what things did you try in 2021 that you absolutely loved? Was there anything that I maybe should have reviewed that didn't make it on the countdown? 
I'm not worried about only doing it in the year that it was released. So if you've got something that came out last year that you think I should have reviewed and tried, leave it down in the comments below. Maybe it'll end up on next year's countdown. While you're down there in the comments, don't forget to give me a thumbs up or if you just absolutely think I'm a terrible reviewer, if you hate my listings, if you think I should just shut up and stop saying those damn songs, give me a thumbs down. It's all engagement. The algorithm isn't a picky bitch, and neither am I. Check my grinder. New year, same slut. While you're down there, you can also subscribe to my channel and hit that bell notification icon so you'll be notified of all future uploads. I try really hard to upload at least one video a week, and sometimes, if you're very lucky, I'll even have a bonus video for you. Ooh, sassy. If you'd like to chat, banter, or commiserate between uploads, all of my social media will be linked down in the description box below, including a link to my newly renovated, relaunched website, The World of Champagne at JanessaJ.com. Coming soon. Thank you so much for watching. 2021 was an adventure, and I'm sure 2022 is going to be another wild rodeo of a year. I am so thankful that you guys are here along on this journey with me, and I can't wait to see what this year brings in beauty, in glam, and geek, and gore, and all the fun we're going to have here on this channel. So thank you so much for being here, and until I see you again, bye. Yeah, well, that's gonna be good enough. That's gonna be what it is. Thank you, you may go. You are dismissed. <laughs> you are dismissed. And whatever the fuck the last one was, I can't remember. I don't know. They're <laughs> the mimosa, I feel like. But I thought it was another food one. I don't know. I'm getting confused. It doesn't matter. Can you get it? Do you need me to? <laughs> and these are the Pat McGrath blood. <laughs> Is this just a Trixie Mattel stan channel? I don't know why. I... And what number is this again? 13? I love the greens because there's this whole row of gl of, uh, of gleans. Row of gleans. But uh, pretty girl. Whew. Like, where's Bobble? Oh, I do have these. Right here, I think. Terra Moons. Obviously. Lethal is dead. What's that sound? <laughs> so we've come to the end of the road. Copyright strike. And just what? Oh. They're not going to recognize the sound. <laughs> That's it. Okay, done. <laughs> done. End the of the video. Over. <laughs>